Hi, in today's video, let's take a look at how I went about making the DIY shoe rack with palettes, some old palettes I got from um, the market. So, the first part of the process was basically me sketching out the idea, even though I'd sent something I had wanted to build on the internet. There was the need for me to sketch it out that is the various parts or the various forms of it and then add a measurement to it as well so that's what you can see me doing here after the sketch i had to go to the palette good for me i had already removed some from um, the other wood so i had just the you know, the wood as you can see me back and so i had to take them all out and then use those that i haven't removed yet to form sort of like a table uh, to be able to work on so i selected the ones i was going to use and then i went ahead to continue the process so here are the ones that i selected uh, i selected a very fine ones out of the others so after that i got my tools i have a hammer a saw a grinding machine a drill machine and then a measuring tape which are going to aid me with the process now i have my um, grinding disc um, and then i also have my pen so with a grinding machine i installed a sandpaper disc uh, with a sandpaper on top of it so as you can see me doing here which is going to aid me sandpaper or the wood or the pallet wood that have been removed so i installed the handle for it as well Now after that, I had to make sure I was in my safety gear. So I have my helmet, my face marks or nose marks. I also have my gloves. And then I also have my footwear, as you can see here, which is to, you know, to help prevent any injury from happening. So from there, I went ahead to start with the sandpaper. So I did sandpaper, all the wood that I was going to use for the um, DIY palette. Um, uh, shoe rack so I sampled both the front and back the side and every part of it to aid with the entire process so I use a um, grinding machine which I installed a sample paper decks on top of it uh, to do the sample print of all my wood So as you can see, I have my sandpaper wood. Uh, these are some of them. I sandpapered a lot more in addition to this to help with the entire process. So after the sandpapering, I had to um, do some cutting. So I had to measure out all that I sketched on my paper and then get to the various points that I was going to cut. So this particular one, because the size of the wood was three inches, I had to divide it into two because I wanted to have two smaller parts so that is 1.5 inches each so i divided the wood into two by using a measuring tape so marked it out and then i went out to um, use this um, wood straight edge wood to serve as like a rule to rule a line and then from there i went out to use my saw to cut i didn't have any you know cutting machines here so i had to do all the cutting manually so i went out to cut this out using my saw it took quite some time but i was able to you know cut it all out and then i went ahead to use it for the um the shoe rack so after um, divided the wood into two I went I to um, cut vertically so the first part was cutting horizontally so I measured three feet so because the size of my pallet shoe rack was three feet I cut a length of three feet from this so I'm cutting the extra um, wood away from the ones that I have divided so that's what you can see me doing at this point so after that um, I have my two 1.5 inch wood and then I went out to um, cut another wood, which I also divided that into two, 1.5 each. 
uh, for each side and then I went ahead to divide that. So after that, I have all my wood here. You can see the smaller ones. I have four of that and I have three of the three inches wood. So I'm going to continue to um, cut more because these are the long sides uh, wood. So here I'm measuring the three feet of um, length on the wood to cut that out because the total length of my pallet uh, shoe rack was three feet. So that's what I'm doing. I'd already done that for the smaller wood. So I'm doing that for this um, bigger ones. And then uh, so rolling the line with the edge of my saw. And then after that, I'm going to cut them out. So that's what you can see me doing here, cutting all the woods that I'm going to use um, for my shoe rack here. So they are all three feet each. If you watch my previous video, you notice that the length initially was going to be 30 inches, but I decided to make them three feet to be able to take in more um, shoes as compared to that of the 30 inches. So that's what I'm doing here. I finished cutting all my um, three feet and then the smaller ones is 12 inches or one foot so I needed to have a slanted edge from um, those ones so if you saw the final ones you notice that I had some slanted edge but before then I had to get my 12 inches here so that's what I'm cutting um, in this particular section so these or the smaller ones are 12 inches each or one foot so after cutting um, the extra wood of my measurement. I went ahead to you know lay all of them down. So I have four of my 1.5 inches. I have um, three of my three inches. I have two of my 12 inches. Okay, so I think I switched to three. And you said I was going to use four 1.5 inches, but I decided to use three so I could just use one for the base. So that's all we have here. And from here, we are going to go ahead to. Uh, put them together. So I have some uh, materials. I have some nails 1.5 inches nails And then I also have 1.5 inches screws which is going to a to screw them to the wall So that's the screws here and then I have a wood lacquer which is going to be used for the finishing And then I also have a thinner which is going to be used to mix the with the wood lacquer So as you can see as part of my tools, I have a paint brush here so I went ahead to cut the slanted part for my um, 12 inches wood just to add a little bit of design to my shoe rack. So I'm dividing that into two, that's 1.5 inches. And then from there I measured about um, eight inches. And then I went ahead to rule the slanted line. And then I went ahead to cut. So that's me cutting that here. So after, during the cutting, I used that to measure of the other one, mark the slanted line, and then I went ahead to cut that as well. So after cutting the two woods, I went ahead to use my sandpaper to sandpaper out the edges of the entire wood to give it a smooth, you know, edges so it doesn't, you know, end up becoming so sharp that could even end up hurting someone. So that's what I'm doing here. I went ahead to sandpaper off. The edges of all these um, the smaller woods and I even after doing that I went to do that of the bigger ones as well to have a very fine and smooth edges so it doesn't become very sharp so I had to then try to nail my um, woods together so I'm going to be using uh, 1.5 inches of nails for that I'm using nails instead of screws for this one because the screws are a little bit bulky and I didn't want them to um, end up, you know, breaking my woods apart. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm nailing the three inches wood, um, two nails to each side, and then after that, I'm going to go ahead to apply it to the back. So this is the back of my um, 12 inches um, wood. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead to nail it to the back. So I'll make sure that the edges were, you know, flashing. Um, put the edges of the long wood on top of the 12 inches wood and then after that I went ahead to nail it uh, at the back so I'm done with one side I'm going to do the other side from here so as you can see I'm nailing that also um, at the back so I'm done with the base so this is the base one which is at the back I'm going to go ahead to do the top one which is also going to hit at the top edge flash the top edge of the 12 inches wood so I'm nailing that here and after doing 
that I'm also going to go ahead to nail another one. So I'm doing two nails at on each wood so it's able to hold the wood very firm. So after that I go ahead to do the other other part as well. So nailing that and then after doing the back wood, so this is the back, I'm going to go ahead to do that of the front as well. So with the front, I'm going to do one three inches of wood. And then there's also going to be one 1.5 so the three inches is going to be at the bottom uh, just as i did at the back i'm going to apply or use two nails on each side and then after that i'm going to do that of uh, 1.5 inches as well so yeah so that's what i'm doing here just to hold or ha have it very firm so that's what i'm using the nails for at this point So I'm done with that as well. I'm going to apply that of the uh, 1.5 inches. Now I had to do a measurement of I think I did about the six inches. So the whole thing was like about 12 um, inches. So I measured about seven inches instead. So I could apply the wood from there at the top. So I measured that and then marked that with my pen. And then after that, I went ahead to use my nails with the help of the hammer to drive that in to hold that firm. So I also used two um, nails at each side to also hold it firm so that it doesn't, you know, easily come off. So that's what I am doing at this point. So after nailing that, then I have my first um, shoe rack actually ready. So as you can see that I have that ready here and my um, BO, I had to apply the base. Yes, so there was one more wood I had to use to apply at the base that's what i'm doing at this point now I'm, i chose to go to the base and uh, do the base this way because i didn't want it to have a complete closure of it so that in case there's any sand or any dead particles in it it is going to be difficult to you know get them off so i did that this will leave in some spaces so it's easier to me um, so it's easier to be able to use um you know um, a brush or a foam or something to be able to clear whatever um dirt or sand or pie particles that end up settling in the, uh, the base of the shoe rack so i was having a little bit struggle at this point because i i had to make sure it was rightly centered in the middle of the um the shoe rack so um, that's me driving some nails into it so it's uh, firm and then after that i'll have my first um, shoe rack ready so i did this at the both sides of the shoe rack um, this is the one edge of it and then after that I went ahead to switch it over to the other edge making sure it is right in the middle of the rack and then I went ahead to drive my my nose into the wood to hold it firm. As you can see, I have my first um, shoe rack done. This is how it looks, um, the inside, the side side, uh, as well as uh, the front part and then the side of it. So this is my completed first shoe rack. So I'm going to go through to follow through the processes to be able to make the other ones as well so I had to do a little bit of some preparing at the edges like I was saying earlier to not make it too uh, sharp but a little bit smooth and fine so that uh, it doesn't you know and the chance of um, hurting someone so that's what I'm doing here so after that I'll go ahead to um, work on the other ones so I'm also to see that this is the biggest of the shoe racks the side of this is 12 inches um, the subsequent ones is going to be one is going to be 10 inches and then the other is going to be 8 inches the 8 inches is going to be the last one of the shoe racks which is meant to house smaller shoes or um, yes sandals or slippers so after the first one i had to go ahead to work on the subsequent ones and as you can see i had already done my cut now the smaller section for this one is 10 inches instead of 12 inches so i reduced it by two inches so it's able to um, make the size that i wanted so i'd already done all the cutting the slanted part and heavy part 
and uh, basically ready to go ahead to nail them together. So just as I did for the first one, I went ahead to you know repeat the same process by using my nails with the help of my hammer and then went ahead to drive all the nails into it with the same process. So the only difference with this one is that it has just um, the smaller sides. That is, a, instead of 12 inches, I made these ones um, 10 inches, reduced it by two inches, and then I went ahead to drive my nails to it, just making sure it's you know, well positioned on the, um, the wood. So this is the back as usual, and um, the other side, over here as you can see so yeah that's the same process with the first one just went out to drive them into um, the nails into the wood and then after the process I'll have my complete um, second set for my shoe rack so as you can see I have my second set of the shoe rack done and I think you can notice the difference between the two the one that has a 12 inches the biggest and then the next one which is 10 inches which has a shortage of two inches from that so that is two i have now i'll go ahead to uh, work on the third one and then finally i'll go ahead to work on the fourth one as well so yeah the same process goes with the third one as well i have so the third one has the same size as the second one the sides are um, 10 inches each so i just go ahead to drive the nails into the wood and then that will be about it. So as you can see, I have my three sets of um, shoe racks ready. Um, for the fourth one, I, I couldn't record the process, but I, it was just basically the same process. But that instead of 10 inches was 8 inches to the side. So I'll go ahead and then um, work on that and then after that, it was time to apply my um, wood lacquer to the, the ones I had done already. So the wood, purpose of the wood lacquer was to make it have a smooth finish. Um, instead of you know, spraying or maybe painting, I went out to use wood lacquer instead. So here I'm going to be mixing my wood lacquer with the help of the thinner. So I went out to uh, pour a good amount or content of the wood lacquer into my um, bowl over there and then um, after pouring the quantity I went ahead to add my thinner to it now for the thinner it was good for me to add a good amount of it so it doesn't make it too light as well as also too thick so after adding that there was a need for me to do a continuous stir to my pipe and then after stirring for a while, I noticed it was a little bit thick, so I had to add a little bit more of the thinner to be able to get a very fine, a little bit, you know, uh, not so thick, not so light uh, mixture. So I am able to go ahead to apply that to the, the wood. So now I have my mixture very fine, just as I wanted it. So it's time to apply it to the, um, the wood or the shoe racks that have been completed so here they are i'm going to go ahead to use the paint brush that i bought to be able to do the application so i just go ahead to make sure it's clean and then dip it into the um the lacquer the mixed um, lacquer with thinner and then go ahead to you know apply that to every part of the shoe rack so i just went ahead to continue this process until i'm done with all the three that i have as of now and then after this, I went out to dry them in the sun and then went out to do the very last one, which is the smaller size shoe rack. And then after that, apply the lacquer so and then it was time to mount them. So here I'm going to be mounting the shoe racks and I have a very clean um, wall where I don't have anything on that section of the wall. So uh, the first part was to measure out where the screws were going to go into the the shoe rack and then I had to use my bit and then my with the help of my color screw to create a hole in there so as you can see I'm creating a hole and then I created one on the other side so I measured that out and then created another hole and then after that I had to uh, mount it on the wall look at a very good size of space from the base or the ground to it use the level to get a straight you know make sure it's a straight on the wall and then I went ahead to use my cordless drill to make a mark through the holes that I had 
um, had created. So after um, making a mark, it was time to then bring off the wood and then go ahead to drill um, into the wall. So after drilling the walls, it was now time for me to mount the first set of, or uh, the first rack into the wall. Now I was going to be able to do this with the help of some wall blocks. So as you can see, I placed them into the wall. And then after that, I went ahead to mount the first um, shoe rack. With the help of the cordless machine, I went ahead to screw my shoes into the wall blocks that had me placed in there was and then after making sure it was straight i went ahead to fasten the screws and i had my first one mounted so i followed through the same process to um have the others also mounted but before mounting them i made sure i had a space of about five inches between them and even space so that it doesn't you know, look um, awkward so I went out to do that and then after that created a hose and the shoe racks and then after that went to mark on the wall and then after that I saw draw the wall and then after that screw them into the wall to have that so that has been done and as you can see I have all my shoe racks mounted on the wall so here are my mounted shoe racks on the wall uh, with some shoes on them and as you can see they look really really nice just as I'd wanted to um, build them so basically this brings an end to this video if you enjoyed this video uh, make sure to like and share it with others and if you've not subscribed yet make sure to subscribe so that you keep seeing more of this video now this part of my DIY project I have many more projects that I'll be working on so I'll do well to record them and then share with you so That'll be about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.